Swayam Prabha Digital India Educated India Hello everybody, welcome back to this fourth session on uh, great experiments in psychology and this is the fourth lecture of the week 4. In today's class, we are going to discuss about uh, something very different from what we have discussed before and this test is a very interesting study. This study is a very interesting one primarily because uh, this is a, a test on temptations, whether we can, how we can uh, resist our temptations and how can we express our self control or can we actually understand um, how our self control will be 40 years later. Now, this was shown by Walter Michel and his colleagues and um, basically this uh, is famous, famously known as the marshmallow test and you will uh, easily come across the marshmallow test online if you go through and especially this study was conducted by uh, Walter Michel in 1972. So, uh, this talks about our motives and when we are uh, trying to obtain something whether over the short term or the long term. And very often we must suppress or inhibit the direct expression of our motives or wishes. So, how do we do it and can we learn to do it better? So, here uh, is there a particular cause that actually stops us or is there something that um, inhibits um, uh, the self control. So, this was a very interesting study uh, that Walter Michel tried out with children and uh, on self control in children and uh, he explored this for the last 40 years and his experiments using the marshmallow test as it came to be known laid the groundwork for the modern study of self control. So, uh, what is this test about? So, what Michel Walter Michel did was he uh, was actually uh, doing this study on nursery children in Stanford University. So, there was this Bing's nursery school in Stanford where he uh, worked with uh, 16 boys and 16 girls attending the school and their age range between 3 years 6 months to 5 years 8 months and so, so with a median of 4 years 6 months. And the procedures were conducted by 2 male experimenters. So, primarily this study was very well conducted. It tells you how uh, what are the major things that needs to be addressed during the conduction of a psychological experiment. So, here the, it, uh, the procedures were conducted by 2 male experimenters and 8 subjects that is 4 males and 4 females were assigned randomly to each of the 4 experimental conditions. So, I have just graphically represented this. So, we will uh, talk about the conditions later. So, as you can see there were 16 boys and 16 girls selected and they were uh, randomly assigned to the 4 conditions. Young children, so the uh, mean age being 4 years 6 months and uh, the minimum age being 3 years 6 months maximum being 5 years 8 months, it is very important to familiarize them with the experimental situation and uh, to control the other variables confounding the experimental situation. It is also important for us to understand that how they would generally respond in a particular situation. So, that is why what Walter Michel and his associates did was before the experiment, before the actual experiment began a week prior to that, two male experimenters spent a few days playing with as many children in the nursery school as they could. So, what are they trying to do? They are trying to familiarize themselves with the st uh, students, with the children, so that uh, during the experimental situation they would not uh, have another confounding variable affecting their behavioral pattern. So, if uh, the child is uh, responding to a situation in a particular way that should be 
as because of the manipulation of the independent variable and not as because of some other variable that was affecting their behavior. So, in this case, so this is done with all experiments. So, in this case also, in this experiment also, that is why the familiarization was done with the children. And these sessions were designed in such a way, so that the children would more readily agree to accompany the experimenters, especially to the experimental room, which was known as a surprise room. And once they were there, they would be at ease. So, for most of the experiments in psychology, especially if you are, uh, if you are one of a psychology students and you know conducting an experiment in psychology, the first thing that we assure is the comfort and the ease of the subject or the participant who is there for the study. Of course, now uh, you must remember I am not talking of Milgram studies here because uh, this could be a counter argument that in Milgram studies uh, they were not uh, being given the comfort. So, one of the reasons and that has been an ethical constraint of the study uh, where the exposure uh, was uh, done to uh, such a, a situation where the, the, uh, where the st participants were not feeling very comfortable. But as Milgram argued that that was uh, to deal with obedience you could not uh, see to the comfort and see to the well being of the participants initially. Now, coming back to this uh, experiment, uh, so what was done is they from the experimenters, the two experimenters familiarize themselves with the children, so that they would readily agree to go accompany the experimenters to the room, to the surprise room or the experimental room later on that is during the experiment. So, after obtaining the child's consent to go to the surprise room, the experimenter escorted the child to the experimental room. Now, experimental room is the surprise room that is for the children. So, once during the experiment, the uh, subject or the child, the participant easily went with the experimenter to the surprise room. And what was there in the experimental room? The experimental room was a small private chamber containing a table on which lay 5 1 inch long pieces of pretzel. So, that is uh, something that is sweet that children love eating and an opaque cake tin. And so, there is nothing else, but you will see what uh, stuff that is there in the room. And other than so, there was a uh, small table on which there were 5 pretzel sticks, 1 inch long pretzel sticks. And a chair was in front of the table, and on a second chair, there was an empty cardboard box. So, the table had this opaque tin in the pretzels and uh, there was another uh, chair, a chair was in front of the table and there was another chair on and there was an empty cardboard box in it. And under the cake tin on the table were 5 2 inch long pretzels and 2 animal cookies. So, now remember that these are things that children would love to have. So, uh, the experimenter selected things for the experiment that were desirable to the kids. So, unless if you are trying to do an experiment on self control, you have to actually um, uh, built in something that would uh, be a conflict to self control, be a conflict to response inhibition. So, um, so these were things that, that all children would love to have. So, here under the cake tin were two long longer, so that is two inch long pretzels and two animal cookies. And on the floor near the chair with the cardboard box were four battery operated toys. So, on one wall at the right angle of the table was a one way mirror. So, from where they could actually see the observe to observe the experiment. And apart from those objects, the room was empty. So, as you can see this room or this surprise room is filled with things that the child would love to have. So, there were the pretzel sticks of 1 inch long 5 pretzel sticks and there were 2 pretzel uh, sticks uh, 2 inch long 2 pretzel sticks and 2 animal cookies under the cake tin. And there was a box uh, on the um, floor and along with that there were 4 battery operated toys. And the experimenter pointed out the four toys and before the child could begin to play with the toys, asked the child to sit in the chair which was in front of the table. So, the 
when uh, I will show you the photograph. So, then the experimenter demonstrated each toy briefly in a friendly manner saying with enthusiasm that after each demonstration they would play with the toys later on. So, um, they, so they, he was what he was actually trying to do was he was trying to increase the eagerness of the child about uh, you know and, and anticipation to actually get those toys. So, placing each toy in the cardboard box out of sight of the child. So, he removed all the toys and these references to the toys were designed to help relax the children and also to as I mentioned to set up an expectancy that both the child and the experimenter would play with the toy sometime later on uh, later on in this session. So, the, the child would be eager to continue the experiment in the expectancy that he would get to play. So, thus terminating the delay period would not mean having to terminate play in the surprise room. So, uh, we will get to see how the delay period can be terminated. So, the next phase required teaching the child the technique for terminating the waiting period and summoning the experimenter at will. So, uh, for this purpose what the experimenter did was he, he said that sometimes I have to go out of the room and when I do you can bring me back. So, if the child wanted to bring the experimenter back to the room he could do it and how, what how would he do it. So, do you see these tiny pretzels? Well, if I go out and the room uh, out of the room and you eat one of these pretzels you can make me come back into the room and let us try it. I will go out of the room now and shut the door as soon as I do you eat one of the pretzels and make me come back. So, what is being done is the child is being familiarized with the situation that you can actually if if you want the experimenter to come back, if you want this delay session to end, then he would just need to eat the pretzel. So, that is something desirable that would be um, and that would also act as a ringer for the child. So, the experimenter left the room and re entered once the child had put the pretzel in his mouth. So, this is just the preliminary before the experiment is beginning. So, to ensure the child learned reliably how to bring the experimenter back, this sequence was repeated four times with four or five small pretz uh, with four of the five small pretzels. So, still leaving the last small piece lying next to the unopened cake tin. So, uh, he actually finished um, you know just by practicing by rehearsing how the child could get the experimenter back into the room they had actually he finished the four pretzels, but um, consciously left the last one there. So, and there was also this cake box where the cookies and the other big pretzel, pretzels lay. So, then after that the experimenter lifted the cake tin revealing the two sets of rewards. So, reward objects lying there. So, that is the cookies and the five two inch pretzels and asked the children which they prefer more. So, the cookies or the pretzel. And the children are then told that they can wait until the experimenter reserves, uh, returns and have both the desired treats. So, that is the cookies and the pretzel or can eat the small one small one inch pretzel and then they will get one of the less the less preferred treat. So, now what is being done is the child was being instructed on how to get he is already being trained as to how to get the uh, experimenter back into the room. So, what was being done was uh, the, the preferred things and the less the more preferred and the less preferred reward objects. So, the, uh, a child could prefer a cookie more than a pretzel or a pretzel more than a cookie. So, uh, it was kept on the tin there and it uh, the child was said there were four conditions I will tell you about the four conditions and here the child was said that if you wish to uh, end this delay I will be out for some time and I will return after some time, but if you wish to end this delay you just need to have that small pretzel the one of the means the remaining one pretzel of the first five. So, uh, and then I will immediately come into the room and once I come into the room you cannot have the um, preferred thing your preferred reward. So, that is if the child preferred a cookie then you cannot have the cookie, but you can have the pretzel or if the child preferred the pretzel then you can have the pretzel uh, you can have the 
cookie but not the pretzel. So, it was uh, the preferred item would be kept away, but the other uh, less preferred item would be given to the child. But if the child did not uh, want, did could wait for a while before the experimenter came back or till the experimenter came back, then uh, the child was told that he would be able to get all both the reward items. So, here what was happening was the, ins the ins with the af after the instructions the child faced was faced with a choice. So, he could either continue waiting for the more preferred reward until the experimenter returned or he could stop waiting by bringing the experimenter back. So, if he stopped waiting then he would receive the less favored, but more immediately available reward and forego the more preferred one. So, this would be an immediate, immediate gratification while so, if I if I want the reward uh, the uh, at least the even if it is a least preferred one I would rather eat the pretzel quickly. So, that uh, immediately the uh, experimenter comes back and he gives me the reward. So, that would be immediate gratification, but if the child waited till the experimenter came back then he would get both the rewards. So, the child had two options either to wait and get the preferred one as well as the less preferred one or to immediately is to stop waiting and get the immediate reward. And this you see how the experiment was uh, conducted. So, even the experimenter did not know that which condition would be given to the child. So, I spoke about the four conditions initially and now uh, these four conditions one of the four conditions the child was introduced to. So, depending on the condition and the child's choice of preference of reward. Uh, the experimenter picked up the cake tin and along with it if for the condition 1 picked up nothing else. So, they were there. So, the cookies and the pretzel that remained there for children who were given the condition 1 this was um, there was uh, both the treats were pre available in front of the child. For condition 2 the more preferred reward was kept in front of the child and the less preferred reward was taken away. Condition 3 the less preferred award was kept in front of the child and the more preferred award was taken away. And in condition 4 both the rewards were taken away. So, but the child was told that you would get uh, the if, if you waited for till I come back then you will get both the rewards. If you do not want to wait and uh, then you just eat the pretzel I will come and give you the least preferred the less preferred reward. So, the now just as I was mentioning right now that the experimenter that is one of the two male experimenters who were conducting the study were also not aware of the uh, condition that the child would get. So, till this moment in time uh, the experimenter was not aware at this point when the condition was to be introduced. So, whether the cookies and the pretzel would be kept in the on the desk or would either of them be taken away or both be taken away the condition was introduced with a sheet of paper. So, are uh, telling the exper experimenter at this point in time. So, basically that also uh, tries to nullify the experimenter bias even while talking because after all we are human beings and when we are interacting with people then there may be a bias that is brought on by our behavior. So, the physical arrangement was such that the rewards if left. So, if the uh, like in condition 1 if nothing else was picked up. So, uh, the rewards so the pretzel and the uh, cookie was there. So, it was um, left directly in front of the child at about shoulder level. So, the marshmallow test you can see this child uh, staring at the marshmallow. Hmm. And uh, you, you, this is a very, very interesting experiment, and you can actually conduct it on, uh, you know, uh, your uh, people at home, and you see that, you know, whether there is a delay in gratification, and that also says a lot about self-control. We'll actually come to that very soon. So the results showed that the waiting time was scored from the moment. Uh, the actually, the waiting time was scored from the moment the experimenter shut the door. And the experiment returned either as soon as the child signaled or after 15 minutes. So, that was the time period that was the criterion time if the child did not signal. So, if the child uh, did not eat up the pretzel and call, up, call back the um, experimenter, then uh, this experiment would end by 15 minutes of time. 
but um, for so the the it was really strange because it was seen that um, there were uh, for no rewards the children stayed for a mean of 11.29 minutes so where the rewards were not placed in front of the child the children could wait so the delay time was for more than 18, 11 minutes when both rewards were there on the contrary so if you gave two rewards in front of the child and made the child look at it i mean you were not making the child look at it but it's in front of the child so if he looks at it then uh, the delay time was only 1 minute 0 0.03 seconds if the delayed reward uh, was uh, kept then it was a 4.87 and for the immediate reward it was so immediate reward was the uh, least preferred less preferred reward so that was 5 minutes 72 seconds and the delayed re reward was a preferred um, reward so if if the both the rewards were kept then uh, the least time was uh, you know they could control the delay and uh, so within a very short span of time that indicates that in very short span of time they uh, the children said that well enough is enough and they ate up the pretzel and wanted the reward um, the even if it is the less preferred one and uh, for the if the more preferred reward was kept you will see that after the 1.03 that is the next uh, lowest score. So, that indicates that that is the next lowest time for which the delay could be uh, kept and if the uh, pre less preferred reward was kept in front of the child then the child could uh, actually stay on for 5 minutes uh, or 72 seconds of mean time and as I mentioned earlier that if the rewards were not kept in front of the child the child could delay it for 11.29 minutes. So, the results show that 6 out of 8 children waited the maximum 15 minutes time when they could attend to neither the immediate nor the delayed rewards whereas the mean waiting time was about 1 minute when they could attend to both the rewards as we saw from the uh, skill uh, from the results section. Some children covered their eyes so how did they actually stay away from the reward. So, some children covered their eyes with their hands rested their heads on their arms and found other similar techniques of averting their eyes from the reward so from the desirable object. So, they tried to distract themselves from the um, desirable subject desirable object and uh, many times they also invented games of their own or like um, playing with their hands and feet singing or even falling asleep and one child did fall asleep uh, during the session. So, um, and many seemed uh, to try to reduce the frustration as I mentioned by generating new diversions or distractions. And uh, uh, the um, children under the other conditions, so that is where they could see the immediate rewards, the delayed or both only waited for very short times before calling the experimenter by eating up the pretzel and accepting the immediate available reward. So, if it was visible in front of the child then the waiting period was lesser. So, uh, this led to a so basically you know further experiments were conducted by Walter Michel and his colleagues and this led to a, a new concept of the hot and cool systems and uh, the uh, development of a framework to explain the human ability to delay gratification. And uh, Walter Michel proposed the hot and cool system to explain why willpower succeeds or fails. So, the cool system is more cognitive in nature. So, it is essentially a thinking system incorporating the knowledge about sensations, feelings, actions and goals reminding yourself for instance why you should not eat the marshmallow. So, it, it tells uh, the individuals a cool system actually uh, is like, um, like a control system trying to stop the person from um, going beyond the uh, 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 telling the person what is right and wrong. 
and the hot system is responsible for quick responsive reactions or responses to certain triggers. So, it is more impulsive in nature, the hot system is more impulsive in nature and uh, it's, uh, it, it wants an immediate gratification. So, it does not really care for the long term considerations or long term implications. So, uh, you know if you did have a cartoon, uh, you, could, you could explain it as uh, the white, uh, white angel with a ring uh, on, uh, on your shoulder who is actually the cool, cool system and the hot system would be something like um, the devil with horns telling you to do things impulsively. So, um, so basically when will power fails, this is what Walter Michel said that it is exposure to a hot stimulus that essentially overrides the cool system leading to impulsive actions. And some people it seems may be more or less susceptible to hot triggers. So, there is that that is like a, a innate uh, characteristic of the individual where they are more uh, susceptible uh, to uh, impulsive reactions. And that is true if you know in clinical psychology also we see that there are individuals who are really impulsive in nature and who uh, respond um, uh, very uh, impulsively to they have emotional vulnerability and they respond very emotionally very impulsively to situations at hand and the arousal system just rises up. So, if it is if it is like uh, as I spoke about the emotional vulnerability. So, there are individuals who uh, are too much in love and too much in hate and maybe you know too much involved and absolutely isolated. So, the there, there are swings in behavior patterns and uh, they are also very impulsive in nature. And um, uh, this susceptibility to emotional responses may influence their behavior throughout life as Michel discovered when he re revisited his marshmallow test subjects as adolescents. And we will just come to that right now. So, uh, you know with this, uh, this experiment it was such a simple experiment carried out and later on subsequent research followed it and Walter Michel carried out his conducted this research for more than 40 years. And Casey, Michelle and Choda and other colleagues tracked down the 59 subjects who were now in their 40s and who had participated in the marshmallow experiments as children. And the subjects were tested, the participants and those children had been uh, grown up now and they were in their 40s were tested on willpower, strength and self control. And in general children who were less successful at resisting the marshmallow 40 years earlier performed more poorly on the self control tasks as adults. And Casey and colleagues also examined the brain activity in some of the subjects using fMRI and pre when presented with tempting stimuli, individuals with low self control showed brain patterns that differed from those with high self control. So, just imagine that uh, this had actually carried out, carried out um, the pattern had remained uh, for 40 years, for more than 40 years. And the researchers found that the prefrontal cortex um, was more active in subjects with higher self control and the ventral striatum which is a region uh, for th processing desires and rewards showed boosted activity in those with lower self control. So, um, uh, Michel also found that those who had deferred gratification 40 years earlier were more were more competent and received higher SAT scores than their peers. That meaning that this characteristic likely remains with a person for life. So, while this study as I as I mentioned you know this was such a simple study, but it showed that you know if you um, if you display the a delayed gratification even for such a small thing as a pretzel or marshmallow and then you know this uh, this this small this behavior is also indicative of your self control years later. And actually there is uh, the brain pattern of that individual also indicated that uh, you know of the individuals indicated that there is a significant amount of activity uh, which is different in the high self control people as compared to the low self control people. Now, uh, as I mentioned that this study is very simplistic, but the findings outline some of the foundational differences in individuals that can predict success. Uh, the week's lectures oh, with um, this study and especially uh, you know as I mentioned that self control 
study is this uh, study is very important especially because it was carried out in such a simplistic fashion uh, considering all the experimental uh, methodology and um, this was this is also predictive of uh, future um, uh, this is, so, the predictivity, predictive validity of this uh, experiment is also very high. So, the, it could actually predict the future self control measures and delayed gratification. So, thus is been found as one of the major characteristics of individuals displaying better self control. So, you could also try out some of these experiments that we have spoken about uh, in this uh, sessions um, in these sessions. And um, I would like to the next session, I would like to talk about some of the things that we have not covered in the great experiments. So, stay tuned in. Thank you.